Hello, this is another video in the series for the full stack JavaScript book. In this video, we will dive a little bit deeper into the Backbone JS framework. So first, let's start with hello world example in the 05-backbone folder. This is index.html file. For simplicity, I put all the JavaScript logic inside of the HTML file doesn't have to be like that. You can obviously you can abstract it into separate files. So firstly, we create this app variable. It will become window.app because by default, the JavaScript defaults to the window, which is a global scope. Then we create the router. Some people don't use router. Backbone is very flexible. I personally prefer to use router and uh, the syntax is that we have this property routes and uh, each key value pair signifies a certain route, the URL route. So on the left side, we would have the URL, which is empty, which means it's just a home. Uh, there's nothing in the URL after the domain. And uh, the home, the value on the right side, the home, it's actually function that we define later. So this function will create home view, which is right here on line 24. It's a backbone view. And then it will call render on that view. Okay, so let's explore home view a little bit more. What we have here is EL, template and render. EL stands for element. This is a backbone convention for defining an uh, element to which assign this uh, view. So the body, basically the body of HTML would be this view. And then I'm using underscore, which is a default templating agent for backbone. So I'm using underscore dot template, hello world. That will be our template or a string. It's not even HTML, it's just text. Then in the render, I'm using this dot dollar sign el so what this does it will take your el and create a jquery element and put it into the dollar sign el it's more effective than you creating a new jquery elements with dollar sign and then passing this dot el for example like this The code I'm about to type is completely analogous except that it's not as effective so this line 29, it's not as effective as line 28 because on line 28, the value is already there. The jQuery object is already there for you. So it's more effective. Anyway, what we do here, we pass this HTML. So nothing fancy, we use HTML function, pass that string to it. And then lastly, in the document.ready, we create the router, assign it to app, and then we need this backbone.history.start. Just something to remember that we need to have. And if you start this application, you would see hello world. So we're going to move on to the collection. In the collection, I hard-coded some data. Ideally, you would want to get this from the server, but it's a topic for a different video. So we have two kinds of apples. Then I invited this new routes, apple slash colon apple name. So it will actually parse that URL and give us the value, which is really, really convenient. So when we hit this load apple function, we get the value from the URL. How cool is that? And then in initialize, what I'm doing, I am creating this collection which is apples and passing the data by using apples.reset. And of course I have two views, home and uh, apple view, to which I'm passing the collection, apples. So in the home view, I have this collection and uh, my template would be just output data. So angle brace uh, percentage sign equals means print this variable and this variable will come from uh, from the collection. 
So I'm taking the collection that models, stringifying it and putting it into the data. So this is exactly the same data as in the template. They must match. If they don't match, uh, you would not see anything. So basically what you're passing to the template is what you expect in the template and print in the template or manipulate somehow. And then the collection is nothing, but we need that object. We don't have anything fancy there. And then in the individual Apple view, that's the URL for Apple slash Apple name. We have this figure which will get the URL from attributes and it will get the name. So it will show us an image and it will have a caption. The render function uses collection.where. So basically remember that URL value, Apple name, that's where it comes to play. We're using that value to filter our collection and then we get the, just the first element. We're using square braces zero for the first element because in JavaScript arrays are zero based. Okay, and then we're using jQuery uh, body.html append apple.html and at the end we're using document.ready to output it. So let's see this in action. Go into my terminal, start starting the server. So hello world, just text. Let's go to collections. So we see this uh, stringified JSON. It's not very useful, but uh, just give you idea that our, our collection is working. Now, uh, apples slash Fuji. Let me double check the URL. It's apple slash Fuji. I think I need this sign, this um, anchor sign or hash sign, hashtag, whatever you call it. So this is how Backbone interprets the routes. Because without it, it would be just like a normal URL, but with it, it will be the Backbone URL. There is a way to make Backbone work without this hash sign, but uh, by default we need the hash sign. Okay, so we get our Apple and if we change the URL, it changes. So what, what is good about this approach, it's a single page application, but it allows us to put that information in the URL or to use that information from the URL. So this URL could be bookmarked, it could be saved, it could be shared, and then uh, it would be the people visiting this link or you revisiting it from bookmarks will take you exactly where you used to be. Because otherwise, if it's a single page application, you click on your apples, let's say it's a link, and then the URL never changes, right? So basically, the state is not represented in the URL. It's very, very user friendly. You just will end up always at the same starting place. But with this approach, it's very nice that you can actually get the nice URL that represents your current state, the current state of your application. So you can get there fast.